We begin with that month of celebrating the history and achievements of the LGBTQ community created almost three decades ago and this week rejected for the second year by Miami-Dade School Board. A marathon lineup of speakers took the public hearing well past midnight. Emotions high and in some cases respect levels low, prompting the board chair to demand decorum and the superintendent to draw a line. When I hear a comment that says that we're scaring children and that we are increasing or contributing to mental health illness of our children, I simply cannot accept that. Like last year, board members who voted against majority, a Pride Month um, raised concerns that it no. could put the district or teachers in a position of violating new state laws that put limits on sex and gender education. Those supporting History Month drew distinctions between a celebration and actual curriculum. We've put in all the legal protections, and that includes no instructional materials, making sure that nobody's forced to partake in any uh, activity. The vote to reject was five to three, one absence whose vote would not have changed the result. The school board is a nonpartisan entity, though here's important context. The new majority of five is comprised of the most conservative members of the board. All but one were elected or appointed in the last 13 months. Board member Roberto Alonzo elected last August. He is back with us here to get into some of the context and the detail. And you've been with us before, but first time at the table. No, thank you, Glenna, Welcome. for having me here today. Welcome. So there, this whole hearing we were talking about kept you up really late, and there was even meeting after you were finished. Um, but despite all of this passion and the sound and the fury, this board knew how it was going to vote. There was telegraphed at a committee meeting days earlier. So, so tell me about that context. Well, I think it's important for, for residents to know that, you know, all these issues come before us at our committee and we discussed what it is that we're going to be doing within our school system. Um, and we have to follow the law and we have to really focus in on what's important. What are some of the bigger issues that we're dealing with at our school system when it comes to student proficiencies as well as security of our schools? So, I mean, you deal with a lot. Th this is one of, I think it reflects the state's divide over things, these cultural, culture war issues is I think the term people use. Um, so last year, the board rejected, when the first year of the parental rights and education law, the board rejected this LGBTQ month bec largely because of the law and it was an eight to one. It was almost unanimous in its rejection. This year it was very much more split. Why, why was that? The, the rules hadn't changed. Why that disparity in vote, do you think? Well, I can't speak on behalf of other board That's members, um, but I can tell you for myself, uh, I just was re recently elected and I knocked on thousands of doors speaking to family members within my community, which I represent. And many of the family members, I say the majority, um, did not want to be discussing any of these topics within our schools. We have to follow the law, but we also have to listen to our residents and the parents, which are the ones that are telling us what it is that like, they like our students to be listening to inside of schools. And one of your colleagues on the board, Monica Colucci, said something very similar that she had heard from constituents. So you hear this sort of outcry, and from sort of a, a news point of view, we've been covering so much more of this. Two years ago was the last month that, or the last year that the school district celebrated this month. I don't remember any outcry. I don't remember a debate or, or the passions that we see now. What do you make of that? Well, I think uh, we all saw during the COVID months where parents became more involved in the education of their children. Um, and I think it's important for us to always recognize that there is a, a month, which is the month of June, which we celebrate LGBTQ as a nation. It's a federal holiday. And a lot of the parents have come up to us and said, look, there's already a month. We don't need to have an additional month. The school needs to be focused on math, English, history, sciences, and the core curriculum that needs to be taught inside of our schools. So let, let's talk about the curriculum is very much a part of the new parental rights law. It is strictly uh, sex and gender education will not be part of the curriculum. First it was K to three, then it was expanded through high school. Uh, last year, the proposal to celebrate LGBTQ month in October had curriculum as part of it, uh, studying I think Supreme Court cases that benefited the community. This year, the sponsor said she was very careful to leave curriculum out of it. Your school board attorney said oh, it was okay, it passed legal muster. Did that play into your decision at all? Well, 
My two sisters are teachers. They're elementary school teachers. And I think it's important for us to realize the pressure we put on our teachers when we do some of our decisions and things that we decide on as a board. If we come in and we start celebrating a month within our school system, even though there's no curriculum inside of the actual item, our teachers are gonna be forced to have this discussion with their students. So as we were talking earlier, you know, think about being a third grade teacher and a student coming to talk to you and asking you what a transgender is. That's a very difficult topic that we will then expect our teachers to discuss. Did you, have you talked to teachers at all? Have you heard from them? Definitely, I've visited all the schools within my district and spoken to teachers. And I tell you, the vast majority do not wanna discuss these topics in the classroom. They have a big task ahead of them. Um, many of our students have fallen behind and they need to focus on those core competencies to get the students ready for a brighter future. And do you hear and, and do you advise your teachers if there is a student who, I, I mean, this is, you know, we live in a world where this is not uncommon, especially in South Florida. The LGBTQ community is a significant part, uh, part of our neighbors and communities. And, and do you hear or are you asked about how do I handle when students come into, whether the student is a part of the community or has questions? How do how do you recommend your teachers handle that and, and feel safe from legal challenge? Well, I think the beauty of it is that this district has been always very uh, accepting of all cultures, all um, you know, opinions. We're a very diverse community as Miami-Dade County as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so our teachers are always used to being able to do that. Our district has always been focused on the mental health and providing a counselor in every single one of our schools. Every school has a counselor that is always available to discuss any issues with our students. And what we advise our teachers are is, number one, incorporate the parent in the conversation, and number two, bring the counselors in, but always put in the safety of our students first in everything that they do. That, that goes to something I really wanted to talk about. Um, there is, and you heard the superintendent especially, you know, there is a significant component of Miami-Dade School District that is an LGBT, LGBTQ community, families, students, with the anger and venom that they are now subject to if they watch this hearing. And, and I mean no disrespect to anybody, but hearing that for someone with a personal stake in it could be very harsh and very hurtful. How do you telegraph to those communities that they are accepted and included and supported in the district? Well, look, it was said by some of the speakers that in every one of our families, we have an LGBTQ individual um, within all of our families. So we are all very accepting of all cultures, of all sexual preferences and their views. Um, but we have to also understand what the role of the school is and what our, we're here to do. Um, so I tell the community is our schools are always accepting of all students. We celebrate all students regardless of their race, their color, their religion, or their sexual orientation. Um, at the end of the day, we don't walk into a classroom to ask a student what's their sexual orientation or where they came from. We're there to celebrate their achievements when it comes to the education that they're receiving and to prepare them for the future. So when you hear uh, people talk about or reports of how, what a cultural split this is and how damaging some people see this, what, how, what is your perspective on that? I mean, how would you answer that? Well, I think that as a community, we have to come together. Um, what we saw the other day of spending 10 hours arguing and bickering back and forth does us no good. Um, it does not solve anything. Our children are watching us. Um, and I think we have other bigger pressing issues, like we were talking earlier, security, um, proficiencies, that we need to focus on our schools. And that's what we really need to come together. If we really want what's best for our students and for our children and for the future, we need to come together on the important topics and accept of each other, regardless of where we stand on some of our own personal thoughts. And you were saying that after this vote was taken, what were you discussing next? It was one in the morning, school security? Yep. It was one in the morning. Anybody left in the audience? <laughs> there was nobody there. It was an item that's very dear and hard to me. Um, we've had a lot of students uh, that have been scared in the recent weeks because of some squatting calls within our oh, schools. Wow. So we want to make sure that our parents know that we're always doing what's best to keep our school secure and to educate our students on what it is that they should be doing and not doing because it is uh, incriminating in many ways if they do any of those crank calls. Um, so that was a big focus of our meeting after, um, which unfortunately only took five minutes and there was no parents or community leaders there to listen or to discuss. Well, there's an upside to five minutes to decide something also. Yes. <laughs> Roberto Alonso, great to have you aboard. You. Open seat whenever you want to come back. Great to have you. Thank you, Glenna. Appreciate it.